Thank you, Uncle um, look, I'd like to speak to the, the section of the bill uh, in relation to the Minister's control of our county development plans uh, and the having the final say. I have very you know, serious concerns about that because, in my view, uh, the councillors are elected. I wish every councillor was elected in the last week the very, very best going forward. The councillors that are elected should have the final say as to how a county development plan is put together. And when I was in the council in 2014, that's um, the way it was, that they had a very big role in how county development plans are put together. But now uh, it looks like as if they're over, uh, overshadowed completely. And that leads to the situation we find ourselves in, that people are finding it more and more difficult to get planning. So really, we'll come down to the Minister of the Day. So imagine, you know, and I shouldn't be picking on any one party, but imagine the Green Party were in government. They'd, about, they'd make sure that nobody uh, was clear to get uh, planning permission uh, in any country development plan. I would make it hugely difficult. We have serious issues about low density and high density in our towns and villages. We desperately need extra housing. I, I pick one town in, 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 in Clannacilty where uh, uh, people that have property in, inside the development area are now being told they have to have a low density um, build when they could easily have a high density, have some beautiful homes there, uh, much needed homes in the Clannacilty area. That's outrageous. Uh, situation they find themselves in, that they're inside the, the development boundary, but the county development plan, being dictated by others other than the local councillors, this is, I don't know what the councillor's role is going to be going forward, Minister, but um, it means that they're now going to end up with low density homes, less homes for people who desperately need homes in a place like Clannacilty and its surrounds. So the whole situation I, I, I see is that it's more and more and more often. It's squeezing out the local councillor, and I wish uh, the deputies in front of me uh, that had their families uh, elected their councillors, Maureen McGrath, uh, Jackie Healy, Johnny Healy, and Maura Healy, and uh, Daniel Sexton, John and Danny Collins, they're finding it extremely difficult now to negotiate on behalf of their constituents. They're pleading with, with um, they're looking at county developments that are, are where they're being overpowered as such. And, and they have people looking for planning in their local area and they're being refused. And that's a terrible upset to, uh, to a family. I met a lady uh, in, uh, in Bantry uh, recently when I was canvassing and she said, Michael, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm going to vote at all. And I asked her why. And do you know what? When she put down on I, I, I was kind of half dealing with the situation. When she told me what happened, her son came home. They lived, he lived 20, 25 years in Balladahab. He went away uh, abroad, came back home. Uh, with a partner and children, wife and children, I'm not sure was they married or not, but anyway, um, he tried to get planning because he, he was going building at home, the firm at home, and he was refused. To make a long story short, every kind of catalogy put in front of him to make sure he couldn't get his planning. And she said, and you know what? She said, I don't think I bought, and you know what? To be quite honest with you, I couldn't blame her, even though I knew damn well it might be the lead to the loss of a vote ourselves. It's hard to blame somebody like that broken-hearted people. They packed their bags and left our country. That's an absolute and astonishing disgrace by, by, by a planning authority, by, by a county development plan that would refuse that man permission in the little bit of ground that they had so that he could live his life here and work here and, and uh, we'll say, uh, be part of... of, of you know, the, the bring up his children mm -hmm. here, uh, mm -hmm. boost the local economy by having people live here permanently. And Minister, I genuinely don't know, are you listening? Because this is a serious crisis. And if this, country, if this, if this section of the bill erodes the councillors say and what they're saying and gives the power to the minister, God almighty, that's a shocking situation we're finding. And it's happening more and more and more in local authorities. And people are telling me that because, God damn it, I was it? So many doors, and we all are, as politicians, if you, you know, if you're trying to elect people belonging to you, that you're trying your best, and people are telling you that what, what exactly can the councillors do in relation to planning? And it's becoming more and more difficult, uh, Minister. 
And why? Because you have a government here that are adamant that people will, that every opposition will be given to people. Well, they want to have a little log cabin at the bottom of their garden in their parents' home to get them off to a start. That's refused. And everybody will be chased out of their garden. If they want to build a home, come back here, or else are living here already and want to live here. Every difficulty is put in front of them. Tens of thousands of euros. I had one person in an island, it cost them 10,000 to apply for planning, and they were refused. And when I asked the person that came to me about it, I said, why didn't you contact me sooner? The man said, when we spend 10,000 euros and done everything above board, surely be to God, that should have got us planning. We don't have to talk to any politician. But sadly, it didn't. And that's the situation we find ourselves in relation to planning in this country. That the local councillor, the local TD, has no more say in it. We had little village nucleus, we had little areas like that where people had some hope of getting a start in their life. And you're walking our own people out of our own country because you continuously refuse. I presume it's the same in Mayo, it's the same in Galway, it's the same in every other rural area as it is in Ireland, as it is in West Cork. And I, all I say is that I will oppose this, uh, Minister, because you have to give the power back to the people that are on the ground talking, uh, to the people who desperately want to get their lives after a start. And if you don't do that, Minister, you are serving injustice to those people. I should not talk to that woman from West Cork who had to see her son fly out with his family, pack his bags, load a trailer and get the hell out of our country. Because our people and this country and this government have turned their back on the ordinary, good living people of this country who want to provide, who want to, who want to, who want to play a part in the local economy. And as I said that woman, it's hard to argue with you when you say you don't want to vote after that because God almighty, how could you ask for a vote after that? It's so, it's so shameful. And that's because of policies that you have put in place, the government have put in place that are anti-local, anti-rural, and sometimes anti-Irish. Thank you. Thank you.